we have an exciting series of some sessions in response to the feedback that you provided in the recent town hall about specific Databricks features that you'd like to learn a little bit more about to help you be more productive on the platform. And in today's first session, we'll be going over uh, the Databricks uh, SQL query uh, functionality in the platform where Lindsay will kick us off and provide an overview of the UI. Uh, she'll also provide uh, details of how you would uh, do your development uh, in setting up your queries, saving your queries, and with those queries in mind, building uh, visualizations and incorporating them into a dashboard. And finally, I'll end us off with uh, providing an overview of the query profile feature within Databricks. With that, I'll hand it over uh, to Lindsay. All right. Thank you, Philip. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, like Philip said, my name is Lindsay Gillespie. I'm a solutions architect here with Databricks, and I am so excited to spend the next 15 minutes with you going through DB SQL. Uh, before I start sharing my screen, though, I'm going to do a quick refresh on what Databricks SQL is. Uh, it provides the general compute resources for the SQL queries, visualizations, and dashboards that are executed against the tables in your lake house. It's packed with thousands of optimizations. Uh, the main one being the vectorized query engine, which is called Photon, that provides extremely fast query performance at low cost. Uh, we'll be focusing today on the queries, visualizations, and dashboards in the UI, but I just wanted to call out that under the hood, no matter how you leverage DB SQL, Photon is the engine optimizing those queries. All right, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Uh, oh, thank you. All right. Perfect. Can I get one thumbs up at least that somebody can see my screen? <laughs> Looks great, Lindsay. OK, thank you so much, Rachel. All right, so here is the homepage of Databricks. Uh, you can always come back here by going to the top left here. Uh, and once you get here, you'll see a few get started links as well as what you worked on recently on the left. And then this is new. Uh, anything that's going on that's popular, anything that you have access to. Uh, but for today, we're going to be spending the most part in this SQL editor here on the left. So let's go ahead and open it up. All right. So here on the left, we have this schema browser, which I find really helpful. Uh, you can look through any catalogs, schemas, and then those tables and columns, especially if you, know, you were working on something yesterday, you forgot, though, exactly which table you were working on, and you can dig back through here and get a refresh of what that looks like underneath. So there's you know five concept table here, for example, and you can get a reminder of what's in there. Uh, but today, we are going to be focusing on the person table. So I went ahead and pinned it to the top. And then here, you can see you know what columns we have, their values. But my favorite feature is this preview of the table, which goes ahead and makes a query for us over here on the right, goes ahead and runs it, and gives us 50 rows just as an example of what we have within this table. Uh, so now that we have our first query created, I want to go ahead and show you a few cool editor tricks that I like using. Uh, one, let's go ahead and add in just a you know simple filter, so that way we can uh, dig a little deeper into the data. And here you can see that as I'm typing, we have this autocomplete feature pull up. So I want to go ahead and do aware. So I'm going to press enter, and I want to filter on a year of birth. And so as I'm typing year, it's pulling up functions that I can use, but also those columns. So I can navigate with up and down arrows, also with my mouse. And here I'm going to go ahead and choose your birth and say, I don't know, the first value is 1963. So let's say year first 1963. So that autocomplete really comes in handy. Another one is if you click these three ellipses, then you have format query. I don't know about y'all, I really like having the formatted queries here. It's a huge help. Uh, so that's a big one for me. You can also always come back here and see what keyboard shortcuts you have. This is based on your operating system. So for me, formatting the query is Command Shift F, and I can always come back to see what the other ones are. All right, and another thing is so right now, uh, Databricks went ahead and added in a limit of 50, but I'm gonna remove that because by default, we limit to a thousand results. Uh, so no matter what, as long as it's checked, which it is by default, then we will only return a thousand results. We recommend leaving this on if you're just digging around, seeing what stuff looks like. 
All right, so now, as you can see down here, it let me know that a thousand rows were returned. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new, well, an existing query because this one's just a little basic. We want to add a little spice so I can show you a few cool new features. So you can open up any existing query. For me, this all queries is what I have access to. There's also just my personal queries and then any favorites, which I went ahead and favorited what I want to show, which is this query params, because I want to show off the cool query params that we have. Uh, so here, these double curly annotation, this is query params. And you'll see this correlates to the fields down here. All this means is that uh, this lets you substitute values into the query at runtime. Uh, so that way it makes it a little more dynamic instead of me hard coding in that 1963. You can add these in. You can uh, add a new one either by doing command I. It'll bring up this little parameter window. Or down here at the plus, you can press parameter and say, I want to you know, make test. Then this drop down lets you decide on the type. Uh, you can do number, dates, times, anything in here. And you can add something as well. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm feeling good with my from and to that we have going on. Um, but just wanted to call that out. Also, uh, another cool feature that I really like is if I'm playing around with different queries or I have multiple, then you can always highlight which part you want to run. And if I press run up here, it will only run that part. So if you notice right now, year of birth is ordered by that last row. Let's say I didn't want to order it for some reason, then you'll see that query ran without that last row on line eight, and it's not ordered anymore. So I'm going to go back to our default just so that we have a clean slate. And next, I want to show this top right section here. So we have that ellipsis, which I showed you. We have the warehouse that you're running on. We also have the save functionality so that you make sure you can come back to this later. Just the way that I added this career params example from the existing, now I can do that as well. Uh, you can schedule. So right now it's based on never, but you can go as high as one month. If you click that, you can choose the time and date that you'd like to run this at. And then the last one up top right here is sharing permissions. So say I want to share this query with my counterpart, Arif, who's on the call, then I can choose his email. And you have four uh, options here for role-based access. We have manage, edit, run, and view. Uh, I trust Arif. We're going to go ahead and allow manage. And I can say email new user. Or I can also copy the link and send it via Teams to make sure that he has that link. So you can go ahead and add, and it'll show you that Arif's now a user of this query, and I can go ahead and remove or change that at any time. All right, so that is all I wanted to show with the queries. Now let's move into the visualizations. So now at the bottom here, you can see that the plus bar where we also could have added the parameter, you can also add a visualization. So this pulls up big old window. We have a bunch of different visualization types over here, scrolling through. But right now, we're going to focus on a bar chart just to keep it simple. So you walk through these options, and you can choose the column that you like. So let's go for x. Let's make, I don't know, month of birth. And then we're going to base it on the count of people with that month of birth. And I'm going to group it by gender just to add a little bit more color and then stack as well. Uh, so now we have a pretty good looking chart, but you can go through and add in uh, different labels if you'd like, you know, to make it a little bit prettier to read, uh, different stuff along here, change the colors, you know, all the formatting options. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. All right, and now we have right next to our results, we have this bar chart and every time that you rerun this query, it will update the results in that visualization itself. All right, so again, this is very basic bar chart that we made here. I want to show you um, some that are already made. And I'm going to go open up the same exact query, just already has some built in. So here we have a horizontal bar chart. We have a pie chart based on gender. And then patients by year, just another bar chart. Uh, so with this, that's the visualization. You can always come back in here and edit. It'll pull up the same exact window that you used to create. That way you can go back in and see, or if you have access to somebody else's, you can click edit and see how they made it in case you wanna make one similar to your own. All right, so now let's move into dashboarding. Uh, so now that we've made these visualizations, we're gonna to want to add them to some kind of dashboard. That way people can see that high level 
and I can add in a little extra juice wherever I want. So here uh, we can add to dashboard and you can either search for an existing one. So say, I don't know, I wanna add it to one that's already there. I can search through here, but I don't wanna add it to an existing one. I wanna create a new dashboard. So you can go ahead and do this within here by saying create new dashboard. And let's, I don't know, DB SQL demo May 24th. I'm gonna save it off here and I can click add. All right, and it gave me this little pop-up here at the bottom. You can go ahead and open this and voila, we have our first dashboard. Uh, it's very simple. <laughs> so we can click into edit and you can you know rearrange the blocks however you'd like. I'm gonna add in a text box. This takes markdown, so I can do, you know, I don't know, this is data. <laughs> and add that to the dashboard. So now you have a little bit extra there. And I click done editing. And again, this one's really simple. I want to show you a little bit of a better demo dashboard. So I'm going to click back to dashboards here on the left. And now again, I can see all dashboards that I have access to. Mine's at the top right now. I can go over to my dashboards that I've worked on. And then favorites is the one that I would like to show. So here we have the same exact uh, underlying query that I we've been working with this whole time. Just those visualizations are added in, uh, you know, a little text and whatnot. Um, as you come here, these ellipses also let you either download, uh, preview the visualization, visualization data itself. So just kind of like those results that we saw with the queries, you can see a preview of that here. And you can also view the query itself, which will take you back to the SQL editor and show you what that underlying query is. I'm gonna go back though and show you all the top right here, some of these options. So they look very similar to what we had with the SQL editor, right? still sharing off. So here, um, I think I already had a reef in here as being able to run. So say I want to remove him and then add back in. Then I can say any of these roles, but the new thing is this share queries associated with the dashboard. So this was not on the SQL editor because now with the dashboard, you have the option to either share the underlying queries themselves with anybody that you share with. So if I didn't want a reef to be able to click that view query and go back and see what's running the visualization, and I would leave this unchecked. Um, so again, I could do that, and now a reef can run, but wouldn't be able to actually view underneath. All right, now we have the schedule tab. Again, very similar. This will actually refresh the queries underneath the dashboard, and then update the visualizations. Therefore, after that, so you can do this you know, never up to every one week. It'll run on the warehouse you select. You can add any subscribers you'd like. So say I'd like to add myself, then I'll get an email whenever it's updated. Save it off there. And then you can also do ad hoc refreshing if you'd like. And over here on the right, we have a few different options as well. I showed you the edit, uh, but we also have a few different exporting methods. I'm gonna go ahead and download as PDF. That way it goes ahead and gets working. It takes a quick second, but you can also export the dashboard and that will download a DB dash file from there. And then as this is downloading the PDF, just a few other things, you can go into full screen mode if you're presenting. Uh, you can also you know, move it around different folders or clone if you'd like to uh, make it your own or be able to make a slightly different version. So now let's download the PDF in here. Beautiful little PDF that you're able to share around if you'd like. All right. And with that, that is DB SQL, your 101. We have the SQL editor, the visualizations, and the dashboards all wrapped up into one. And I hope that this gave you all a good overview. Um, so for a moment, I'm going to just jump back to the slides um, to share um, the next part of the presentation and give you a little bit of an overview uh, of what the Databricks Query Profiler is. And that's uh, a very specific feature as part of Databricks that will allow you to view queries that have already been executed to visualize what the data flow and sequence of operations look like in each of the steps as your queries are being processed. And uh, this tool and feature will allow you to be able to uh, do things such as identifying the slowest parts of your queries so you can figure out and determine how you can optimize them to make them run more uh, quickly. And with this tool as well, uh, what I'll be showcasing is the ability to drill down into individual metrics 
around uh, the time spent, the number of rows returned, and memory at each stage along the way. Okay, so let me share now the Databricks uh, browser. So here um, I'm on the homepage for the SQL uh, homepage, and I've already prepared a query ahead of time. Um, I'm going to open that up and just describe to you uh, what's in there so that later when we go to the query profiler, you can map the specific SQL logic to what's shown. Uh, so in here, uh, I have a query that is uh, querying the public data uh, database. And very specifically, it is uh, retrieving the 10 most recent drug labelers that have drugs with more than 10 packages. And for the results that are returned, uh, to return the number of drugs that those labelers have that meet that criteria. And so uh, just the structure of how that query is uh, was, uh, was written is that there is an initial sub query where we are querying records from the FDA drug package and the FDA drug product tables joined by the product ID. And then from there, the number of packages are calculated for every single drug and, and filtered for only drugs that have more than 10 packages associated with it. Uh, the, that result set is then taken and queried again and grouped by the uh, drug labeler to uh, determine the number of drugs um, that meet that particular criteria. And it's pulling the most uh, recent marketing date of the drug to determine which ones are the most recent labelers, and then it's limiting at the very end to 10. So with that in mind, um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this particular query. And so we'll let that run. It's pointed to a very specific warehouse and it is it took 4.41 uh, seconds. So if you hop over to the query history tab, you can click on that specific query that completed. And on the right panel, you'll get a high level view of metadata and metrics on that query execution, getting information such as uh, uh, the creator of uh, that query, uh, the total walk clock duration of that query running, including the breakout between the amount of time spent scheduling, as well as running uh, the specific query. And then you'll get also other metadata such as the start and end time as well. So from this panel, you can click uh, see query profile. And then on the left side, it's gonna default to this graph view representation of what happened when that query was getting executed by Databricks. And so um, the best way to look at it is gonna be to start from the bottom where uh, recall, as I was describing the query, it was first in that inner query, pulling records from two specific tables and joining them together and aggregating and grouping the grouping by the results. And so you can see that here with two of these paths where uh, the public uh, data FDA drug package uh, data was scanned. Those records uh, were converted to columnar, they're filtered, shuffled uh, to be paired for a join. And the same thing happening in the FDA drug product table. Uh, with those results, they're joined together, and there's additional grouping and aggregations and shuffling that are happening as the query was interpreting uh, the total number of results uh, and aggregating total number of products that met the criteria, filtering it out to get to the most recent drug labelers that were returned to the very end. And so in this particular panel, um, by default, uh, for each of these stages, you'll see the amount of time that's spent. But you can toggle between other metrics such as rows um, that were returned in each of these stages, as well as the amount of peak memory uh, that it took to complete that stage of that specific operation. Um, besides the graph view, another helpful view to, to, to look at the order of the operations is to, uh, to look at it from the tree standpoint. And here, as you are uh, toggling between the specific metrics, you'll get a better sense relatively uh, between these specific stages where some of those bottlenecks may lie. So as an example, if uh, one of your very large queries uh, was running and it was taking hours, maybe even days to run, 
you can run this, uh, you can look at the query profiler for that query, uh, switch to the tree view and immediately see which stage it's spending the most amount of time in or that's using the most amount of memory. And that would be indicative of specifically a place in your query that you can spend a little bit of time on to optimize. And so as an example, if the uh, amount of time spent to scan the entire data was uh, 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 took a really, a really long time, you may wanna consider perhaps running um, a filtering uh, on that specific scans immediately before joining them with other data sets. And that would be ways to essentially optimize your query and uh, to improve your overall experience working within the platform.